In today's video, we're going to be looking at radiator ducting. G'day, I'm Trav. Welcome back to the Fast and the Nerdy. When it comes to ducting design, there's two main considerations, engine cooling and cooling drag. And cooling drag can make up a fair portion of the overall car's drag, so it's definitely something we need to consider. When we look at the equation for heat transfer for a radiator, one of the key components is the mass flow rate of the air. So as the air passes across the tubes that contain the coolant, it draws the heat from the coolant into the air. The higher the air mass flow rate, the higher the heat transfer. When we look at the cooling drag coefficient equation, we can see it's made up of the internal drag and interference drag. Interference drag is concerned with where we eject the system air and the internal drag is related to the ducting design and radiator itself. Today we'll just be looking at the internal drag. When we look at the internal drag coefficients equation, we can start to see how complicated the system can get. We just saw that the more air we flow through the system, the more heat transfer we have, but we also have more drag. The ratio of the cooling air volume flow rate to the car speed is to the power of three. So that heavily influences the amount of internal drag we have. The cooling air volume flow rate is just the mass air flow rate divided by density. So there's a trade-off. We want more air for more heat transfer, but more air also generates a lot more internal drag. So we want to reduce the amount of air flowing through the system, but increase the amount of air flowing through the radiator. And we can do that using ducting. Air flows through a radiator is not due to the amount of air flowing at it, but the pressure differential between the inlet side and the exit side of the radiator. As our ducting is a closed system, we have the same amount of mass flow at any point. If we have any area changes, we just change our velocity. So for example, here at point two, we have a smaller area, so our velocity increases, and the opposite is true of point three. As our mass flow rate doesn't change no matter where we are in the system, we can use this and Bernoulli's theorem to manipulate the amount of pressure we have on the inlet and the outlet side. Bernoulli's theorem simply states that within a closed system, the total pressure is the same at any given point. But the amount each of its two components, static pressure and dynamic pressure, contributes will vary. If, as we move from point one to point two, the area decreases, and as we just saw, the velocity of the air will increase, so our dynamic pressure will increase and our static pressure will decrease. The dynamic pressure can be thought of as the kinetic energy of the air. But for us, what we were really interested in doing is building up as much static pressure on the inlet side of the radiator and dynamic pressure on the outlet side. This will help to increase the mass airflow through the radiator. Here we have a basic but ideal ducting system. As the air enters the ducting, we have no change in static pressure. It then makes its way into the diffuser, spreading itself out. As we have a larger area, our velocity is decreased, so our dynamic pressure is also decreasing and our static pressure is increasing. Then as we move to the radiator, we run into the radiator, so we get like a traffic jam slowing the velocity down further and increasing our static pressure. Then as the air flows through the radiator, we have a big drop off in static pressure. That's due to the thermal changes and friction. The air is heating up and as it heats up, the density increases. As the density increases, the dynamic pressure goes up, so our static pressure decreases. And we can see here that the static pressure on the exit side is now a lot lower than it was on the inlet side of the radiator. And then that's further exaggerated as the air makes its way out through the nozzle. The area is decreasing, so our velocity is increasing, so our static pressure is decreasing. And then the air exits the ducting, hopefully in an area of low static pressure. And that's it for today's video. I hope you'd enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give it a like. And we have, uh, you can also click on this video here, which will go through a more practical application of the theory. Have a great day.